we're going to move on and we're going to be thinking about using integration with these. Okay, do keep your homework to hand because I want to come and have a look at it later on. Now, previously, we had this diagram up here, right? How did we remember that it was, or how, what was one of the ways I suggested remembering the S, V, and A in that order? Down is differentiated. Down is differentiated, but how do we know that it goes S, V, A rather than A, V, S? Suvat, yeah, because it's spelled in the same way as Suvat. S, U, V, A. So they're in the right order. Down, differentiation, because down means differentiate. Uh, D, D, sorry, for differentiate. We also knew that it had with respect to time, which was a bit like dividing by time, which also reminds us of the units. There's many ways of us remembering this. So we've already talked about this, but because differentiating, and we're talking about with respect to time here, because that gets us from displacement to velocity and from velocity to acceleration. Naturally, integrating, which remember is anti-differentiation, will get us from acceleration to velocity and from velocity to displacement. So whenever I see students who have been successful at this topic, normally they see this question. They jot that down at the top of the page just to remind them down is differentiate, up is integrate. And then they do really well from the rest of the question, because that's the, the key part of this, really. So as I mentioned earlier, it's helpful to picture this graph on the right where we move down to differentiate and up to integrate. So that's it. We're just going to dive straight back in now with some more examples. It says that a particle is moving on the x-axis. At time t equals 0, the particle is at the point where x equals 5. That's really weird because we didn't normally get told this extra piece of information. We didn't normally get told that. But we're going to see why we've been told that for this question. So just hold on to that bit I've underlined there. It says the velocity of the particle at a time t seconds, where t is greater than 0, is 6t minus t squared. Find an expression for the displacement of the particle from O at time t seconds. Well. Obviously, what we're doing here, we're going to have to integrate because the theme is integrate. But we're going to integrate this. So s is the integral of 6t minus t squared, and it's with respect to time. If you wanted to, you could dive straight in and just say, integrate this. You don't have to use the integration symbol. But it's nice to show the examiner you understand what it is that you're doing here. So when I integrate this, what does 6t minus t squared integrate to? Let's hope we've not forgotten how to integrate in a few lessons. How much, sorry? 3t squared <coughs> minus a third t cubed plus c. plus c. And after this, I am banning Ishrak and Arafal from answering questions, and I'm starting picking on other people. OK, because it's always those two, and it's not fair. So get ready to be picked on today, guys. Now, don't forget, we have to have that plus C that we've got, OK? If you don't like writing this extra line because you feel like it's sort of confusing you, you know to go from the velocity to the displacement. You can just integrate straight away, OK? I had to add in the plus C, OK? I had to add in the plus C because we <coughs> many things would have that velocity, but they might have had a different displacement. So now, that bit that I underlined in blue earlier on, now it has its relevance. It's a bit like, what would they when we did um, integration in pure, what did we get given sometimes that would help us find out what plus c was? The x and the y coordinate. They'd give us a coordinate. And basically, what they're giving you here is a coordinate. They're giving you the x coordinate, which is time, because we know time runs along here. And the displacement, they've said that x is 5. Oh, I've just seen that they're using the letter x. So sorry, but we probably should have been using the letter x here. They love to use x and s, and I, I didn't read that very carefully, so that's my fault. OK, so we're now going to use this information. We know when t equals 0, x equals 5. So I can say 5 equals 0, 0. Oh, great. So c is equal to 5. Otherwise, our formula for where it was wouldn't make any sense. We would say when t is 0, and we'd say, well, it's at c. But we need to know what c is. So c is equal to 5. So 
we have x equals 3t squared minus a third t cubed plus 5. Now, part B of the question, I want to just point out a few things that I think are interesting about the way that it's worded. First of all, it's asking us about the distance of the particle. It's not asking about the displacement. So if it's in a negative displacement, we could just say the distance is the, the magnitude of that. It also wants the distance of the particle from its starting point. It is not saying how far has the tra particle travelled. That's asking something that is different. It is just saying, this is where it was at the beginning. How, how, where is it five seconds later? How, what's the distance between those two points? Not how far has it traveled. And just to illustrate that with a point, if this is where it was and then this is where it is, that's clearly the distance between the two points. But maybe the journey it had taken was this. So there's two different questions. One is the distance it's traveled and one is the distance between the two points. I'm only saying that because I know where this topic goes in the next couple of examples. So all we need to do for this particular one, for part B, well, what do I need to do? Someone tell me what I need to do. Substitute six in for t. So we get three times six squared minus a third times six cubed plus five. Have you already worked that out? How much? Pardon? 41. So it's 41 meters when t is equal to 6. So we just need to find out the distance between its starting point and this. So what's the last stage that's needed? Where did it start? It started at 5. So the distance is 41 take away 5, which is 36 meters. OK, so let's go over to the next page. <coughs> a particle travels in a straight line. After t seconds, its velocity is given by v equals 4 minus 2t squared, where t is greater than 0. Find the distance travelled by the particle in the first three seconds of its motion. Now I'm going to do something that I don't want you to write down, OK? I just want you to listen for a second. If I tried to integrate this and find out what the displacement is, and I said I'll substitute in t equals 0 to find out where it started, and then I'll substitute in t equals 3 to find out where it was, I could subtract them and find the distance between those two points. But my question is not asking for that. The last time I did that, I was finding the distance between those two points. This question is asking something different. This one is saying the distance that it has traveled to go from this point to this point here. So we have to think differently for this one. We can't just come up with the displacement and substitute in values and then subtract them. We have to do it differently. And you're going to see how this is done differently here. First of all, before we dive in with any integration, I want to explore this velocity function. And I always want you to do this with questions. And you'll see why in just a moment. So v equals 4 minus 2t squared. Well, I want to kind of sketch this. So what can I do here to help me sketch this? Roots, yep. So I'll, uh, I can factorize it. And I get 2. Actually, that's silly. I don't need to make it factorized. Can't factorize that. Mad thing to say. And so we get uh, 2t squared equals 4, t squared equals 2, so t is equal to plus or minus root 2. Do we know where it crosses the axis? If this is t and this is v? 
the positive, it will cross at positive 4. We also know that it's crossing the axes at minus root 2 and at root 2. And we know it's a negative shape, so it's going to look like this, okay? I'm going to just slightly bend this a bit. And there's my root 2 over there. It's meant to be a bit more of a, a quadratic-y kind of shape like that, okay? Now, if we're trying to find on a velocity time graph, how do we find the distance travelled on a velocity time graph? Wind back to a few mechanics lessons ago, and I don't <coughs> want Ishrak to answer. Area. Pardon? Area. It's the area under a, under a line, isn't it? So here, we want to find the distance travelled. So it's going to be the area under the curve. But root 2, when it gets to root 2, it goes below the curve. And we want to find out how far it travels in the first three seconds. So what I actually want to find out is this area that I have here. And I want to find this area here. What's my <coughs> issue? It's going to be a negative area, and it says it up in the title, doesn't it? So this is why you cannot just integrate it, substitute in 0 and substitute in 3, and subtract them, because that's not how the area process works. And you remember when we did that with integration? So for this thing, you have to be so careful to do that integration. Yeah, it says find the distance travelled by the particle in the first three seconds, hence me doing it between 0 and 3. And root 2 is in somewhere in between 1.41, OK? So for this question, and they love, love, love getting you to do integration questions where the distance travelled, you can't just do it between 0 and 3. They love to do that. So you must make sure that you think about what the sketch of it looks like, and then you break it down into the pieces that you actually need to do. So we won't do it between 0 and 3 we know that we're going to have to do it in a slightly different route. We're going to integrate, because we still want the, the area underneath it. We're going to integrate between 0 and root 2, 4 minus 2t squared with respect to t. To mean, what does this integrate to? Yep. Minus 4 over 3t cubed. And we're doing this between 0 and root 2. <coughs> I'm not going to bother with substituting the 0 in in my particular case, just because it's going to completely cancel, isn't it? When you put 0 in here and you put 0 in here. So we get 4 root 2 minus 2 over 3 times root 2 cubed. What is root 2 cubed without a calculator? 2 root 2. So then this becomes minus 4 over 3, root 2. And so 4 minus 4 over 3 is 8 over 3, root 2. So 8 over 3 root 2 is the amount of distance that the particle travels in the first two seconds. First two seconds, the first root 2 seconds. Could anybody describe to me, if this is the origin that's here, how is that particle moving to begin with? Is it moving backwards? Is it moving forwards? It's decelerating, yeah, and we can actually see it's, it is moving forwards, though, because it has a positive velocity because it's above the graph. So it's moving forwards, and then it gets to a point where it stops, which is this point here where it has a, a, a zero velocity, and then it starts moving backwards. So you can start to see in like a real-life context why we have to break that journey down into two points, because if I'm walking forwards, that's how far I've travelled as my distance. If I then walk backwards three paces... 
I've clearly traveled forwards and then backwards, so I want to find out that total distance. If I just integrated between zero and three, it would tell me from where I started, just that one step behind me, to where I am now. Because the positive distance walking over to the table cancels with some of the negative distance of me moving backwards. That's, it's really nice to see how this whole stuff we've done with area is completely interlinked with everything we've been learning about in mechanics as well. Anyway, I've done a lot of talking there, so let's just finish up the part of the question. We're going to integrate between root 2 and 3 um, of 4 minus 2t squared. Well, we actually know that that integrates to 4t minus 2 over 3t cubed, and that's between root 2 and 3. So when I put the 3 in, I get 4 times 3 minus 2 over 3 times 3 cubed. Subtract. Well, I don't need to put the root 2. Uh, what, sorry? Thank you. So it should be 3 cubed. Thank you. And I don't need to bother doing the root 2 substitution because I already did the root 2 substitution over here. So I just get 8 over 3 root 2. Are we expecting this answer to be negative or positive? Negative. negative. It's a negative area, OK? So we then get, what's this? Um, 27, 9, 18, 12 minus 6. That's minus 6, I believe, for that beginning bit. 2 thirds of 27, 18, 12 minus 18. Yeah, minus 6, minus 8 over 3, root 2. Please check if I've done any of these things wrong. I've had a long day of lessons so far. So the total distance is 8 over 3 root 2. What do I need to do with this distance? Yeah, I need to, I need to make it become the positive version of this. So I'm going to add on 6, and I'm going to add on 8 over 3 root 2. Obviously, if this thing was positive, you'd have to add it on as a negative. You do the opposite of that, OK? So it looks like our final answer is 16 over 3, root 2, plus 6. Probably we could give that as an exact answer, but have you got what that is as a decimal, Shan? No? OK, hold it. If I've got my calculator around, I've lost it. We just do 16 over 3, root 2, plus 6. <coughs> oh, here's my calculator. Thank you. So 13.5 metres to three significant figures. If this comes up in a mock exam or a real exam, I would say nine times out of 10, maybe eight times out of 10, there's going to be a negative area. So you have to draw the graph. It's probably the exercise I'm about to give you. There's probably not that many negative areas. But in the real thing, there's always going to be, they want to check to see if you understand about negative areas that we've got there. So before you do the exercise for me, um, I want you to have a go at this one here. This bit's easy. This bit's easy. This is the new part that we've got. So it says the distance traveled by p in this interval. Think about the graph. If it was all positive, you could just do it between 0 and 5. If it's not positive, you might have to break it down. I don't know what they're going to be, but you might have to break it down into separate pieces of journeys. OK? So you'll have a go at this one. We'll go through that, and then you can do a little bit of practice. 